Ahoy hoy! Today, I thought I would react to another video by another YouTube channel that a lot of people have been asking me to look at called The Rubber. I believe it's an animated SCP channel. They just seem to have, I don't know if they're original stories or if they're taking stuff off of the wiki and animating it. Um, but it's definitely, it looks like it's fiction. It's not like an explanation thing, so pretty much anything they do won't be wrong or right or whatever. But uh, I thought I'd go over it and see what it is. It's quite popular. Uh, and as I said, a bunch of people have been asking me to take a look at it. And I figured I'd go ahead and give it a try. Let's, uh, let's start now, I suppose. A warped man walked out of the woods, killed our friends right in front of us. Sometimes it would stare more than it would make to kill, try to talk to you. It whispered at me, come and eat. It made me cold in my bones. When I was made to kill, I thought of this, and it calmed me. Hello, everybody. I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Euclid Class Object SCP-323. Hold on. This is clearly being marketed to children. I have so many thoughts. This is clearly being marketed to children, and yet it's... Because, I mean, from the voice, the, hey, everybody, to the to the animation style, to the little character they've got going on there, the little, like, the rubber guy. This is all for little kids, and yet there's blood and stabbing and, oh my god. <laughs> no wonder people wanted me to look at this. What in the... SCP-323 also known as Wendigo Skull, is the skull of an unidentified cervid measuring 55 centimeters long, 27 centimeters wide, and 31 centimeters tall, with a pair of antlers growing from the left and right side. Be clear, I'm not actually super familiar with 323, so this is news to me. If they get something wrong, I'm not going to be able to correct them on it, but that's not my current problem with this video. It's of SCP-323, 323 shows signs of damage consistent with outside exposure, with regular pitting, scarring, and weathering across the object, bleaching on the upper surfaces, and a missing lower jaw. The rear of the skull features an approximately centered ovoid gap, measuring 25 centimeters high and 23 centimeters wide, giving just access reading to an the interior article. space 16 centimeters deep. This seems gap like shows signs of tool use, indicating that it was carved with tools, possibly stone. SCP-323 displays the ability to react to aural, tactile, and visual stimuli. Testing has revealed SCP-323 appears to have a field of view similar to that of other servants and has responded to visual stimuli from up to 50 meters away. 323 Hold on. This is, um, we're gonna, I'm sure there's gonna be more to this in a second, but can we first talk about how? It's apparently like it able to react to stimuli, but you haven't told me like much. Of, you've given me physical dimensions of it. You've given me physical descriptions of it, but you still haven't told me what it is. Like it's an anomaly of some kind. What is what is the anomaly about it? Which I, I guess we're getting into now. But just telling me that it's able to react, like it can sense things and it can react to things on its own, doesn't tell me much about it as an entity. You, you've just assumed I know it's a monster already without telling me. Three is also capable of limited locomotion, typically in the form of small movements and vibrations. In most cases, 323 three will only move away when touched or when personnel are present within its containment chamber. But 323 three has also demonstrated the ability to make larger movement, such as lunging at SCP's personnel and repeatedly attempting to break through its containment. SCP-323 exerts an influential effect in a radius extending roughly 15 meters there we from itself. Go. Individuals within this radius will begin experiencing cannibalistic thoughts and urges, violent outbursts, and impaired judgment after approximately one hour of continuous exposure. Roughly 74% of individuals who reach this point will attempt to place their heads through the gap present in the back of 323. If an individual is incapable of fitting their whole head through the gap, 
attempts will be made to bludgeon their heads against nearby hard surfaces until the point that the individual's head manages. I just want to be clear. This is marketed and, and clearly created for children. Like kids, not teenagers. Kids. Just to fit, loses consciousness, or pass on. Once the individual has fit their head through 323, the individual is classified as SCP 323 1. Within 10 minutes of putting 323 on, 323 1 will undergo drastic physical alterations. 323 1 will experience a rapid loss of body fat, body hair, and pigmentation, followed by the rupturing of the distal phalanges from the fingertips abnormal tooth growth and the blackening of extremities I'm not even gonna bother watching the rest of this this is just reading the SCP article isn't it okay here we go we're getting into some sort of a story SCP 323 which resulted in the death of 12 personnel members before containment could be reestablished hungry so hungry I must eat so very hungry. Always, always hungry. Must not eat. I have to eat. So hungry. So lonely. Alone. Hungry. Should eat. Must, must eat. Lakla Runge, First Nation in Canada. Yeah, I've a skipped ahead a little bit. I mean, I know what the Wendigo is. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to exit out of this video and look at another one of their videos to see if it matches the same sort of style and essentially target audience. Give me a second. All right, we'll get going. The Foundation ordered a male D class personnel to this torture is SB 303. D 3032 with a combat knife until she opened the door. After two hours of tormenting, what the fucking cartoon character? What the fuck are they doing? I just. <laughs> oh my god, that's uh, that's ridiculous. SCP content is not appropriate. Some SCP content is, but most SCP content, especially series one crap, like when you get down to the nitty gritty is not appropriate for children at all. Like, and this had an ad in front of it. I don't even. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. 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 Yep. I mean, I, I, uh, hmm. I'm not going to re finish reacting to most of these because it's just like a rote recitation of the SCP articles with little interspaced or interspersed murders. I, wow. I, I don't, I'm going to say I may end up doing a whole video about how this, this is, wow. Hmm. I am uh, a little awestruck. Not awestruck. That's the wrong word. Uh, dumbfounded is the better better terminology to use here. I I don't know what to tell you. That is, whew, that is clearly marketed to children. I mean, the little cartoon character mascot guy. The everything that's going on here is for kids. Every single bit of it. Anyway, that is not, and I don't know how I have to say this, but that's not cool. Anyway, God, what? This is probably a part of YouTube that already existed outside of SCB content, though. I know my nephew, who is like eight years old, absolutely loves scary and bloody and violent stuff. And like, it's just a matter of putting it in front of your kids in a way that looks palatable and then and then and then like just letting it go and not giving a crap wow
and these have millions of views. So I guess it's not showing up on YouTube kids at the very least. This is insane. What is this content? I don't, oh my God, I don't mind the idea. It, just don't deliberately focus your audience on children. If children come along, there's not much you can do about it, right? Like if, if a kid's watching this, I, I can't do anything other than say the kids don't watch this. But don't like focus it and like bring in cutesy cartoon characters to attract children. And if you don't know what you're doing, that's what you're doing. Stop it. Stop it right now. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just uh, a little little thrown by this. I probably shouldn't have blind reacted. I probably should have like looked at it. Let's look at the comments. Okay, those seem like adult-ish comments. Maybe it's not as bad as I'm thinking. No, no, a lot of these are kids. These are definitely kids. Jesus Christ. Anyway, all right, enough of me being, I don't know, speechless and outraged. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I d am quite disturbed by what I've seen so far, but I'm sure there will be more. It's nice animation. The quality of the animation is great. It's just not appropriate for the content. Also, the, I don't know. anyway, I'm getting off track again. It's just, I can't stop thinking about it. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, hit the subscribe button, then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. If you're a kid, do none of those things. Ugh. And then head on over to patreon.com forward slash D Sumerian. Pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including Vivi and Dr. J Redacted, who have pledged at $100, and Morgan, who has pledged at $40. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here, and I'll see you all again on Tuesday.